History prefers legends to men. Beginning in the year 1818, a young Abraham Lincoln works on a plantation with his parents in Indiana. His best friend is assaulted by one of the farmhands so against his father's orders he attempts to axe him, but he's only nine years old. The man then permanently scars young William's face before being knocked into the river by Abe's father Thomas. For his actions the creepy plantation owner Mr. Bartz fires him, and says that Thomas will pay his family's debt in other ways though doesn't specify how, then reveals a pistol hidden inside his cane. That night Mr. Bartz walks into the Lincoln's home and is witnessed by young Abe bearing blackened eyes. The next morning his mother Nancy's fallen ill with an unknown sickness and dies shortly after. Thomas makes his son promise him that he won't seek vengeance, which he upholds for the next nine years until his father finally passes away. An 18-year-old future president sits alone at a bar planning his revenge, when briefly meeting a stranger named Henry. Under cover of darkness he waits until Bartz finishes speaking with another plantation owner named Adam. When he's alone Abe makes his move but the flintlock jams. Fleeing from the overconfident Bartz, Abe manages to lock himself inside a shed and begins the 22nd process of reloading. When Bartz finally kicks the door down he's met with an ounce of lead to the face. After disposing of the murder weapon, Bart springs back up showing to be a vampire, and is easily about to kill Abe when Henry saves him by what looks like throwing Bart's to the moon. Abe wakes in a foreign home belonging to the superpowered vampire hunter Henry. He explains to him that vampires exist and is disappointed in his performance against Bart's after scouting him to be a hunter. Initially deciding against training him, Henry changes his mind when Abe begs him to get vengeance for his mother. Not having the best of luck with shooting guns, Abe's trained with a fireman's axe having previously worked as a rail splitter. The head's coated in the vampire's weakness and he's told by Henry to cut through a tree in a single swing, which initially standing no chance he's encouraged over and over again until it eventually explodes. Abe learns that all vampires in America descend from Adam, and that evil is weak against silver due to Judas betraying Jesus for 30 pieces, when suddenly noticing the reflectionless Bart standing behind him but is told by Henry that he's not ready to face him. He's taught how to fight in complete darkness, and after a decade of Henry's lessons Abraham becomes a master with the axe. A 28-year-old Lincoln travels to Springfield, and rents a room from shopkeeper Joshua after agreeing on the payment of labor. One day while fulfilling his obligations, Abe meets his future wife Mary Todd, though she's currently in a relationship with a well-known politician named Mr. Douglas. Just then Josh enters with a letter for Abe from Henry, telling the rookie hunter that he's found him his first target. That night, Abe enters the vampire's den who lives life as a chemist, but he's well prepared and captures Abe upside down by his feet with a trapdoor. Before the creature can drain him dry, Abe uses his shaver to slice its throat cut the rope then retrieves his axe to take its head off. His second target is a banker who can turn invisible but is too confident to escape. Using a handful of silver flakes allows him to see it just enough to distract it with his axe and put a vault shelf into its stall. His third a blacksmith who he cooks in his own forge. After cleaning up Springfield of the local pests and burying them all deep within the surrounding woods, Abe and Joshua receive an invite from Mary to attend a ball in Mr. Douglas's honor. Mary and Lincoln spend the entire night dancing while discussing Mary's initial plan to move to America for adventure. They grow close over the coming months and Abe even tells her about his killing of six vampires, but she just thinks it's a joke and he doesn't push it further. After one of their dates Mary uses Lincoln's hat to give him a kiss, but he turns away with the voice of Henry playing in his head not to form close relationships, for the very reason shown that Bart's may be watching. At a plantation in New Orleans, the vampire leader is informed by his sister Vadoma of the dangerous new hunter in town, but Adam just claims that he can't wait to meet him. One night Abe has a visit from his old friend William who's come to town after hearing that Lincoln is studying to be a lawyer. He needs a writ from a white lawyer to say that he's a free man when two slavers jump them trying to take William. After a fight the two are locked up, giving Abe the determination to redirect his career into politics in hopes of fighting for freedom. Henry seems worried about this idea but gives Abe a silver pocket watch telling him that it's finally time. Lincoln returns to Bart's plantation after all these years to get his revenge, but is foiled in his surprise by his smell. After causing his horses to go haywire, Bart's flees inside a stampede while Abe chases him down on the back of one. He's eventually knocked off his steed into the herd and leapt on by Bart's, when a passing horse collects the vampire up in its legs. With all his might the creature throws a horse into Lincoln but the hunter brushes it off and continues the chase. After racing across the backs of the stampede, the back-flipping bloodsucker almost gets to his neck but is blocked by the axe handle, then thrown off the horse before pulling Abe down a cliff with him. While using Abe's own weapon against him, the hunter reveals it to double as a gun and puts a ball through Bart's other eyeball. Before the blind man dies he reveals that Henry is one of a thousand vampires already in America. As a woman shown to be getting attacked by a man who Henry in turn sucks the life out of. 
Abe sees this and attacks the vampire but Henry's able to explain. Several years ago he and his wife were attacked by Adam's early gang of vampires. Despite never seeing their abilities he was still capable of defeating one in a fight, and even gave Arya Stark her inspiration for killing the Night King. Though he was no match for Adam who easily defeated and turned Henry into a vampire. But when biting his wife she instantly died showing that she was pure of heart and Henry wasn't. Since only the living can kill the dead, the curse prevented Henry from bringing harm to any other vampires, so ever since he has trained hunters in hopes of getting his revenge on Adam. With this revelation Lincoln decides to abandon his mission and proposes to marry Todd, where they have a large wedding attended by all their friends including Henry. After being introduced to William, Mary notices that Henry's hand is ice cold but he covers it up by saying that he's a drunk with bad circulation. The hunter warns Abe again about forming relationships since even though the vamp who knows his identity is dead, Adams found a pocket watch in his dead lieutenant's hand addressed to a Mr. Lincoln. The vampire sends his sister to kidnap William and a letter to Abe inviting him to a ball at his plantation. Joshua joins Abe in rescuing their friend and the two travel south to New Orleans. They reach the plantation but on their way up to the house notice that the slaves' quarters are all empty. Peeking through the window the two see all of them dancing in the great hall alongside William and Badoma, when their captors all suddenly turn into vampires and feast on them revealing the slave trade to be the source of their food. William avoids being eaten but is captured just as Abe kicks in the door and confronts them. The room turns dark and his minions begin to attack Lincoln by the dozens, all being slaughtered by the Silver Axe. William briefly escapes but is recaptured by Vadoma. After a long battle filled with beautiful carnage, Vadoma steps in and easily restrains Abe with a chair thrown to her by her brother. Adam reveals his plans to turn the entire United States into a nation of the undead, and tries recruit Lincoln in order to snuff out Henry and his hunters. As Adam's about to slit William's throat in front of Abe, Joshua comes crashing through the wall in a carriage knocking Vadoma away and rescuing his friends. A woman watching from a shed nearby, helps them escape by a boat upriver to a church housing dozens of freed slaves. She reveals herself to be Harriet Tubman, who shelters them from Vadoma who isn't able to step foot on the church's holy grounds. Lincoln begins his political career campaigning to abolish slavery against the likes of Mr. Douglas. Henry warns him that Adam won't take the interference with their food source lightly. But Abe hangs up his axe and gets himself elected President of the United States of America. He moves into the White House with Mary and they soon have a son. Using his powers he signs the Emancipation Proclamation setting into motion the American Civil War. One day while disguised as a maid, Vadoma sneaks into the White House and puts the curse on Abe's son, leaving the hunter behind the pocket watch as a brag. The boy dies and Abe is met by an ageless Henry who pretty much tells him I told you so. The Confederate President Jefferson Davis makes a deal with Adam to deploy his vampires on the front lines, and they rip through Union defenses at the Gettysburg in a single swift strike. During dinner, Lincoln gets a bright idea and orders that all silverware be melted down to produce weapons. After everything they've experienced together, Josh betrays Abe, believing that he's leading them to certain death and going against the vamps. While Abe and William defend a train shipment of silver on its way to the troops near Gettysburg, his wife gets the help of Ms. Tubman to escape to safer areas. On their way to ambush the train, Mary's almost discovered when Adam comes upon her, but with a deadline they ride away unaware of the nearby crowd of free people. The vampires begin to board the train and two attack William in a carriage while he's alone. He uses their new silver bullets to kill both with a single shot to each face. Meeting back up with Abe the two plan to force the vamps to the back of the train, with William taking what's on the roof and Abe taking what's on board. When William begins to detach the carriage he's swarmed, so Abe joins him atop and the two begin to fight as a team, with Abe looking like he hasn't lost a step with his axe in all these years. Abe's axe is caught by Adam who knocks him back and slips William's knife, who's then almost knocked overboard but Abe catches him. As Adam goes to bite Lincoln, Henry saves him with his arm, but he's then thrown into the carriage below and into the crates of supposed silver. They fall apart to reveal it's a decoy and it appears as though Joshua was tricked. But when he's confronted by Adam it turns out he never betrayed his friends and it was all just to get the vampires in one place. Vadoma sets fire to the trestles of an upcoming bridge in hopes of destroying the shipment of silver, just as the pure of heart Joshua is killed. With Henry knocked out on board the train, Abe and William run across the top and make it onto the first half as the rear collapses away. The two fall off into the trestles where Adam comes marching at Abe, but with the silver watches punched straight through his stomach, killing him. Abe and William make it onto the train as it struggles to ascend a rail and begins to slide backwards, but it's caught by Henry who holds it just long enough for them to leap off to safety. The silver is revealed to have been transported by Mary through the Underground Railroad, and is being distributed in the form of bullets and bayonets to the front line. 
weakened by all the silver around the campsite, Vadoma walks straight through and throws a Hail Mary at Mary Todd, but is plugged in the forehead by her silver necklace. The now leaderless vampires stage a final assault on the North, but armed with their new shiny weapons the Union soldiers destroy them, and after a one-sided bloody beat down the North win the war. The President gives the Gettysburg Address that those who died weren't in vain but were to give birth to a new nation governed by free people, for the people not for vampires. Two years later the 14th of April 1865, Abe's writing in his diary that the remaining vampires have fled the country to South America and Asia. Henry tries to convince Lincoln to allow him to turn him into a vampire so that he may spend eternity making the world a better place, but Abe plans to live forever through his legacy. That night he and Mary attend a comedy at the Ford's Theater called Our American Cousin, and during the laughter of the crowd will be shot dead. A century and a half later, Henry approaches a man in a bar who's looking to get revenge just like Abe was in 1827. And the movie ends. Whatever history remembers of me, if it remembers anything at all, it shall only be a fraction of the truth. So you made it. I appreciate your time. I couldn't have done it without you. Tell your mother I said thanks. History remembers the battle and forgets the blood.